Okay, it's now that time of the show where I keep my promise and introduce you to our special guest tonight. His name is Rishi Rajpopat. Sounds familiar? Well, Rishi has solved a 2,500-year-old Sanskrit puzzle. 2,500 years old, let that sink in. It was a grammatical problem, one that Sanskrit scholars have been trying to crack since the 5th century. How did Rishi Rajpopat manage to solve it? But we're going to be asking him that in just a couple of minutes. Rishi is a student at the University of Cambridge, and Cambridge could not be more proud. It is calling Rishi's discovery revolutionary. We are going to let Rishi explain why. Welcome to Beyond Rishi. Welcome to this world. Um, let's just help us understand this. You're probably the best person to do it. This particular puzzle has been around from the very beginning, right? Basically since the 5th century BC. So it's a 2,500-year-old puzzle. Yeah, I mean, why has it been around since then? Because starting with the first, very first commentator, uh, yeah. it has been misinterpreted, this very key rule of Panini's grammar. So that's where it becomes a puzzle, really. So he, he, he wrote his, his commentary, the first commentator wrote the commentary within about 200 years of the writing of the Ashtadhyayi. Now, these are very speculative dates, of course, but, uh, but this, is, this, is, this is what uh, one, one prominent timeline suggests. You know, Rishi, we get all excited when we solve yesterday's wordle puzzle or when we solve some major solution to a problem that's been around. In science, people get excited when they solve a mathematical puzzle that's 100 years old. Uh, you've solved a puzzle that probably dates back to the 5th century BC. So is this the oldest puzzle that had to be solved right now in the world of academia? Well, I'd have to check how old the other puzzles are and how many still remain unsolved. But what I can tell you, Vikram, is that there are many more puzzles, I'm sure, both in the world of Sanskrit literature and outside of Sanskrit literature that, that remain unsolved. And I think uh, it's only a matter of time that, uh, that the next generation, especially the youths of our country, will, will definitely try their hand at some of these and solve uh, a, a good portion of those, hopefully. For all of us who are not completely sure what this means, if you could explain this to us in words of one syllable, what exactly was it that was a puzzle? Was it a puzzle or was it a misunderstanding of the rules of Sanskrit? What exactly did you do or figure out? So Parani wrote this grammar of Sanskrit, which is called the Ashtadhyayi. Uh, it was written around 500 BC or, or, or so. This grammar has got 4,000 rules. Now, what these 4,000 rules do is essentially they help you derive any word and subsequently sentence of Sanskrit. Parani taught us one rule, which we call a meta rule, because it helps us deal with the meta issues of the grammar. And this meta rule uh, helps us decide which of these two rules must be chosen. And that rule is 1.4.2, uh, Book 1, Chapter 4, Rule 2, Viprati Shere Param Karyam. Now, that rule, starting with the very first commentator, was misunderstood. Actually, the very first commentator, Katya, and I was familiar with both two interpretations of that rule. And unfortunately, he picked the wrong one. And the rest of the tradition followed all the way up to until very recently. So, Simon, you're saying Panini had the right rule. It was misunderstood by the yeah. commentators later, which yeah. is why there's been a clash and why no one's been able to yeah. figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, several scholars have worked on this problem and they've made interesting contributions. But uh, what I did is I said, we have to rely on Panini alone because we have to take only his word uh, 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 as seriously as, as, I mean, we cannot take the word of anyone else that came later as seriously as Paranese. All right, Rishi, before you go, tell me a little bit more about yourself. You did a, what, an undergraduate degree in economics, right? And then you got a master's in Sanskrit from Oxford and a PhD now in Sanskrit from Cambridge. All of this shifting from economics to Sanskrit. Where do you go from here? So I had studied Sanskrit in, uh, in high school and I was very fascinated with, with it. Uh, and now I realize I'm fascinated with uh, classical Indo-European languages, more broadly speaking. So I'd done Sanskrit in high school and towards the end of class 12, uh, I, I was told by, by, by a friend of a friend that uh, there's this lady who lives very close to where I do in Mumbai, who teaches Parinese grammar for, for uh, you know, at no charge whatsoever. And she's a retired professor herself from Gujarat. And, and I thought, this sounds very curious. I thought, let's go try it out because we've done Sanskrit for so many years in high school. Let's see what this is about. I knew, I knew that Parani had written this grammar, but I did not know much about the grammar. Started going to that class and I went to that class throughout the, the tenure of my undergraduate education in economics. 
and to, uh, towards the end of the second year of my undergrad or or perhaps around the beginning of the third year i was fairly sure that i was enjoying panini's grammar a lot more than economics 